Hi, I'm Ranger Kevin Clyburg with the John H. Chafee Blackstone River Valley National Heritage Quarter. I'm standing right beside the raceway of the Slatersville Mill. When John Slater arrived in America in 1803, his older brother Samuel Slater gave him the task of finding a site to build a new textile mill. Now, one of the critical elements that John Slater was looking for was a place that would provide the water needed to run all the machinery of that mill. Let's take a look around to see how the waters of the Blackstone River Valley were harnessed to power America's path to industrialization. In the Blackstone Valley, we have essentially a river that was turned into an engineering resource, uh, harnessed by dams at every available foot of drop on the river. And behind those dams, ponds are creating. Upstream on tributary brooks and creeks, swamps were turned into reservoirs to hold water that could then flow downstream during the dry summer months. In effect, the entire watershed of the Blackstone River was turned in to a water supply and delivery system that was going to turn mill wheels and run factory machinery. Before you could harness the power of a river like the Blackstone River, you needed a network of reservoirs, of dams, gates, and raceways. Once all those things were constructed, then you were able to flow the water from the river into your water wheel and then run machinery from that water wheel. Much of the success of the Slater Mill has been attributed to the machines and reproducing the machines uh, based on those in England. But equally important was being able to reproduce the water power system to actually make those machines work. Samuel Slater was not the first person here in Pawtucket to use water power, but the way in which he was using it in his mill was unique. Uh, the machines that they were running were unique, but also the way that the water power was going from the water wheel through a series of drive shafts and belts and then to the machines was unique in that it allowed you a certain amount of flexibility in which machines you connected to those drive shafts. And just as mechanics were always looking for ways to improve their machines, millwrights were always looking for ways to improve the effectiveness of the water power system. What happens with the Industrial Revolution is that the demands on water power becomes much greater, and so uh, people are experimenting with better ways to get energy out of those water wheels. What's interesting is before about 1750, if you set up a mill, a sawmill or a grist mill on some small stream in a small village in New England, for example, you relied on craft knowledge. That is, the people who were building the wheel learned it from their fathers and their grandfathers how to actually make the water wheel work. After about 1750, that changes and people start experimenting with different designs. And that's when you get the great leaps forward in terms of water power technology. The Industrial Revolution could not have happened without water power. Uh, that was true in England as well, but it was, it was extremely important here. And that's why these centers uh, along the East Coast that have rivers, the large rivers of, the Lowell, of Lowell, Massachusetts, uh, and, and Pawtucket, going all the way up the valley to, to Worcester, uh, these centers became very important engines for, for the Industrial Revolution.